Today we come with the Bible lesson from the book of James, the third chapter, the first through the twelfth verse, and it reads as follows. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great force is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds and reptiles and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. When the tongue we praise our, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can salt spring produce fresh water. Amen. Okay, continuing in the book of James is our Bible study. It speaks to, this is about the tongue, this passage. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. The truth of the matter is teaching the word of God comes with a heavy responsibility from showing the faith to speaking the truth. You don't do this and lie on God or about God and you don't teach false doctrine. False doctrine is what the Lord had spoken of so many times in the Bible about the false prophets. So we don't teach false doctrine. So as I always say, study the word yourself. That way we can't give you false doctrine. You at least can say, I understand this or that's not what I read and look it up for yourself. You teach from the Bible. And that is why it is also important for you to read to know when someone is lying to you about the word. We should also have only one master. That's not man. That's not a bishop. That's not priest, pastor, whoever. It's only the Lord. We all have a call slash ministry that we should share. So remember that it has to be about the truth. First Peter 4.10 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others of faithful stewards, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Anyone in a leadership position has a great deal of responsibility and needs to take it seriously. Hebrews 13, 7 says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as men who will give an account. Obey them so that they may do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no benefit to you. 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 7 says, Here is a trustworthy saying, Whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Now the overseer is to be above repro reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him, and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. 
This is not of any human. This will be a lie for any human. This is what you would call a lie because we do it daily. We stumble. We fall. We all were born into sin, point blank. We're at fault on a regular basis, and if we recognize that we are at fault, it is the opportunity for us to confess and repent. Our weaknesses should move us closer to God. Romans 8, 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. This, relate, this is relating to small mechanical parts or just small parts that take charge of large things. As James reiterates that these little things control much larger objects and the object functions off of the little object. In short, the small object has a major power in how the larger larger object moves, interacts, reacts, is perceived. You know, if you uh, you can be the largest person on the planet, and if you have a nasty tongue, people are going to perceive you as being a nasty person. You can be the largest person on the planet with a kind tongue, and people are going to consider you being kind. It has a strong, strong hold on what you do. It controls you. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, and that's in verse 5. But it makes great boast. Consider what is a great force is set on fire by a small spark. The physical aspect is that the tongue has this power and more. The tongue is the largest weapon of mass destruction on this planet. We've started wars with this. We've broken up homes with this. We create racism with this. We create segregation with this. We create hatred with this. We've killed dreams with the tongue. The tongue is described as a viper. It's described as a viper. Poisonous, poisonous. And it's always ready to strike. That tongue is just nasty. And we have to learn to control it, but it is hard. Psalm 140, verse 3 says, They make their tongues as sharp as a serpent's. The poison of vipers is on their lips. So we always are ready for something to come off of that mouth. That's when you got to let the Holy Spirit take control. That's when that mouth should be having a conversation that is about God. The tongue is also the tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Matthew fifteen eleven says, "What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them." You can be somewhere and hear the filth. Uh, people just saying the wrong thing and that's this world but when you speak you speak light into the world see we speak from from a loving side so our conversation should be from a loving side and having a weakness to this world is what will defile you so don't let the world defile you don't let it get to you so it comes out of you let the Lord always come out of you. Pray, as we all should, because I have my faults and weaknesses when it comes to this mouth of mine sometimes. Lord knows I do, and we all do. So pray and ask him to help you improve and get better, and then practice it. Practice it. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Man has tamed animals, domesticated animals for use, and they were wild prior to being domesticated. The tongue has had a problem of being tamed because the word, words from the instrument can pierce the soul. This instrument can hurt you emotionally. It can hurt you. It can lash out at you. 
in some ways that are more destructive than anything physical touching you. Proverbs 12:18 says, The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. The reckless tongue is a terrible thing, but the Lord gives you instructions to tell you of the good with taming the tongue. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth some praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Ephesians 4.29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. This is another instruction. Do not let anything unwholesome, let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. That's an instruction. But only what is helpful for building others up, not down, but up according to their needs and you don't know what they need if you are putting your foot on their throat that it may benefit those who listen people need help we need help and it's good when somebody showers us with helpful words and helpful conversation to make us feel that the Lord is there that makes us know that we can get the help and there's no one better to help you than the Lord. So spew the Lord out all over them as much as you want to because it will only help them. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? This is a common analogy on things of nature not being able to do, do the other. Fresh water and salt water cannot come from the same spring. A whale can't come from a frog's egg. Proverbs 15.4 Proverbs 15.4 says the soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Verse 12 says, My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear an olive, or a grapevine bear fig? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. It is being stated that you can't have things come from where they do not naturally come from. These analogies relate to them knowing that if it's not in them, it can't come out of them in a natural way. A mouth that is abusive and cursive is not going to be a mouth that can uplift someone because it's not in them. We are constantly fighting against the flesh to keep the mouth in check and we have to get stronger with this little vessel that can destroy with a nasty bite. If anything, do with your tongue like Psalm 35, 28 states. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness, your praises all day long. Know the difference in which know the difference in which tongue you will use and when teaching, edifying, uplifting, or praising the Lord, it should be a soothing tree of life because the Lord has given you an opportunity at eternal life. It should be a tongue that proclaims the Lord's righteousness and that praises God at all times. And when this is in your spirit, then your tongue will not be the viper. So Start bringing in good words, the Holy Word, the Lord's Bible, bring it into you. And the more of it you get into you, the more of it you can bring out of you. Practice being like Jesus. The more you practice being like him, the more it will come out of you naturally. You know, if you want to be a good football player, you practice football all the time. So being a good football player came out of you. If you wanted to be a good teacher, you learned and taught and remembered and did everything you needed to do to become a good teacher. So if you want to have a good tongue or a Christ-like tongue or a tongue that speaks of God, then practice what Jesus would do. Jesus would read his word. Jesus would be faithful. Jesus would be obedient. Jesus would be kind. He would be patient. He would be passionate. So know that this tongue is hard to tame. But the more words you put in you means the more word that can come out of you. Amen.